For about the past two years, I've been reliant upon the bottled water industry to supply me with my drinking water. I go to the store, purchase five gallon bottles or jugs of water, and then the smaller, I think they're 16 ounce bottles. But I'm looking to get away from that. What is that plastic made out of? What's it made from, rather? It's made from petroleum. It's a petroleum-based product. I don't know about the rest of you, but I'd prefer not to be consuming water that comes in direct contact with a petroleum-based product. Not to mention that there are more and more studies coming out that are exploring the possible harmful effects of ingesting microplastics, which I believe kind of shed from those plastic bottles. Yes, I understand plastic bottles are a necessary evil, but people are becoming more and more conscious of what they're putting into their bodies, what they're consuming. And in my opinion, I, I think that's a wonderful thing. It's important that you pay attention to what you're consuming because it may potentially affect your health in the long term. So anyway, what I'm getting at here is we're going to be talking about the well today, specifically how to sanitize it. So in order to determine if your well water is safe to drink, you have to get a well test and it really must be done by a professional testing company. And that's what I did. I found a local agency in the community here. They tested the well. I guess it gets reported to the state DEP because they need to keep records of all that. And thankfully, the well water is actually very clean. Uh, very balanced minerals. There's very little radionuclide activity, if I'm pronouncing that correctly and using that term correctly. Also PFOS. PFOS, to my understanding, are chemicals that have leached into the earth that were left behind from humans in the past couple hundred years, I guess. Uh, no PFOS found in my well water, so that is awesome. However, there was coliform bacteria tests and it did come back positive. But thankfully, I believe that's something I can rectify. So, in order to clear my well of this coliform bacteria, I need to sanitize it. In order to sanitize it, I purchased this well safe, well sanitization kit. And in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to do this. And I also purchased a bacteria test. According to the instructions, following the completion of this treatment, we're gonna test our well water in about two to three weeks from now and just confirm that there's no more coliform bacteria in the well. So let's get started. Step number one here, bypass the water softener, other filters, or purification equipment. In my case, I don't have a softener, I don't have any filtration, I don't have any of that. If you do have some type of water purification system or softener, hopefully there is a hose tap in between that purification system and the well where it comes into the house. If there is a hose tap, I think what you would have to do is connect a hose to that pre-filter connection and run it out here to your well. Now step number two is remove the cap or seal from the casting and if possible, measure the depth of the well, uh, the water in the well. Now, I don't have the tools to measure my well. Yes, I could attach a weight to a string, but I get very concerned about that getting caught up on the well pump and I don't wanna take that risk. So they give you a well diameter chart down here so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the cap off my well and just measure the diameter of the well, and then we will use the specified amounts of pellets and granules here. Now, later on in the instructions, we are gonna have to circulate water from that hose directly into the well for about 15 minutes, and at that point, I believe you should smell a chlorine smell. The instructions state, if you do not, then you need to repeat this process and add more chlorine. So let's get the cap off that well. Prior to filming this video, I actually washed off the top of the casting here. You want to try and keep this area as clean as possible because we don't want any debris falling into our well here. So let's start removing these bolts. Also, I have a piece of cardboard down so we can keep everything up off the ground. Yeah, I'm probably going to break all these. So I removed the top of the well casing. It's a little bit dirty up here. Also, I see that the electrical lines are wire nutted right here, so it would be a very wise idea to shut off power to the well in the utility room, but I'm just gonna try and do what I can to clean up this casting a little bit here.
All right, so we're currently looking in the well right now. Obviously, there are the wires that connect down to the well pump down below. And also, about 10 feet down, there is a connection, and that is where the pump supply line connects to the house feed. Not really sure how that connection is made. Maybe a well expert could uh, explain it to me. But anyway, I can see the water at the bottom of the well. I would estimate it to be about 70 feet down. Not going to drop anything down there because I don't want to risk anything getting stuck. But that's a look inside the pipe. Now, the instructions in this well sanitation kit specify that we should use a piece of PVC as a funnel to ensure that this chlorine gets down past the wiring and that junction right there because we don't want chlorine sitting on that junction right there because chlorine is actually pretty corrosive. So let's see if we could cobble up a piece of PVC and get it snuck down in the well past that junction. Now thankfully I did have a piece of PVC handy so I'm going to sneak this down there. I've ensured that it's nice and clean. And also something I've done to ensure I don't drop it down the well, taking a piece of cordage, wrapped a prussic knot around the PVC, duct taped it to the PVC, and then wrapped it around a old oil container. So that way there's no possible way that this could fall down here. As you can see now that piece of PVC is past that pipe junction, which that's what we want. Again, we don't want any chlorine sitting on top of that junction. It would be very bad for the well. All right, next I need to determine how much chlorine I need to drop in the well. And now again, we have pelletized chlorine and we also have granular chlorine. So I've determined, based on this chart here, my well diameter is six inches. So according to this chart, we're going to need 85 pellets. So I'm gonna count out 85 pellets and put it into this box right here. And then we're also gonna need three ounces of this granular chlorine. There is a measurement on the side of the bottle here, so let's pre-measure that as well. All right, I have my 85 pellets and I also have my three ounces of granular chlorine. So I'm waiting for somebody in the house to finish up doing what they need to do with the well system before I add this, but in the meantime, I'm gonna add this granular chlorine to a clean five gallon bucket of water and we will be dumping that solution down the well. So let's go dump that in that clean five gallon bucket. I have a pretty much brand new five gallon bucket here filled about halfway with clean water. Chlorine granules, we'll dump this in. A little bit on the bottom of this container. All right, now it's time to start putting the chlorine down into the well. So I'm gonna start with these 85 pellets. Now the instructions say that you should drop one pellet in first and ensure that you hear a plink, the sound of that pellet hitting the water. In my case, I've been able to look down, straight down and I can see that we do have water down there. So I'll do that anyway, but something else I wanna show you is I've added a funnel to this three quarter inch PVC pipe and I have rinsed this out. For my funnel, I decided to use an old dish soap plastic container because I know it's clean, I washed it out thoroughly. Definitely don't use any funnels that you use for automotive chemicals, it's just asking for trouble. So let's drop one down and make sure we hear a plink, which I'm sure we will. And I heard that plink clear as day, I'm sure you did too, so now we can add the rest of these pellets into the funnel here. <laughs> That's a cool sound. All right, now it's time to dump this granular chlorine solution down the well. I just gotta try and land it in the funnel here. All right, so now it's time to circulate the water in this well. So we're gonna take a garden hose. And at this point, 
the instructions state that you want to connect the garden hose after your pressure tank. So this is currently connected to an outside spigot. Again, I don't have any water filtration uh, system implemented into my uh, well water system. But anyway, we're simply going to take a garden hose and we're going to let this water circulate back into the well for 15 minutes. Now, I'm just going to rinse off the top portion of the well here. I don't think there's any chlorine coming through yet. But I'm going to move this hose further down the well and to ensure that the hose is clean, I'm taking a paper towel and just scraping off any dirt that may be present. I'm trying to get this past the connection as to where the well supply line connects to the house supply junction. Hey Siri, set a timer for 15 minutes. 15 minutes, counting down. And in the meantime, I can now take my funnel out of here. No reason for this to be in here anymore. And I'm thinking I'll save this and wrap this up to use it for next time I need to sanitize the well. Alright, so at the conclusion of 15 minutes, there should be a strong chlorine odor present. Unfortunately, in my case, it's a mild odor. It's not really strong. So, to me, it would seem that my well is pretty deep. So the instructions say if you do not sense a strong chlorine presence, an odor, a smell, re re repeat steps four and five. So I'm actually going to double the amount of chlorine I initially put in here. So I've measured out another 85 tablets, put the funnel back in, let's uh, get these down the well. All right, it's been an additional 15 minutes and when I stick my head down by the wellhead, now I can smell a strong odor of chlorine, which that's what you want. I'm really happy with the decision that I decided to double the specified amount, but that's what the instructions told us to do anyway. So I'm gonna get this hose out of here now. And now I believe it's okay for me to reinstall the wellhead, but there's something I wanna do before I install that cast iron cap. Well, make that two things. For one, this ground wire connection is loose and that does not meet my standard. So I'm going to correct that issue now. Cut off this piece of copper away from the well. Get these wires closer together and all I'm going to do is just add a wire nut here to make this connection a lot better than what it was. That's a good strong connection now. Now the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add some silicone as to where this wire comes through this hole into the wellhead here. So this small port right here, I know you can't see it, but there's a small screen right there, a little vent. And where this wire comes up through this wellhead, there is no sealant. So in theory, any kind of small animals or critters or bugs could come up through this little port right here. So I'm simply going to correct that by using some clear silicone. Seal that up nice and tight. And you can also see that the gasket's a little bit deteriorated right here, but I think it's gonna be all right. Probably could use a new gasket. There's a gasket in tight, uh, around the top of this well hit here, but it, it doesn't appear to be in too terrible condition. The outside's fine, it's just this little spot is severed right here. Maybe even add a dab of silicone right there, I don't know. All right, now let's put this well cap back on. I'm gonna add the underside. I wish the installer of this well specified the GPM, date, depth, so on and so forth. I think sometimes they put a plate on top of wells. However, there's not anything here, so. Let's reinstall this cap. And I'm also installing new bolts.
the heavy rock. Now at this point I'm going to go to every faucet in the house, turn the water on until I detect a chlorine smell, and I'm going to start with the faucet that is the furthest away from the well pressure tank. All right, I smell a strong chlorine odor at this faucet, so I'm gonna shut this off, and I'll go do this with the other faucets, but what we do now is we let the chlorine sit in the system. The instructions state for at least six hours, but ideally overnight, so I'm gonna allow this to sit in the system for about 12 hours. At that point, I'm gonna turn on a garden hose outside, try and flush the chlorine out of the well, and at that point, then I'm going to come back in the house and try and flush chlorine out of these faucets as well. Uh, this may take a few days, so just be aware of that. But ideally, you're trying to get uh, as much as that chlorine out of your well system with that garden hose as possible. Also, a word of caution, try not to drain it directly into your septic tank because you don't want to kill the bacteria that is helping to decompose human excrement. Also a word of advice, if you're able to try and remove these little screens, aerator screens, whatever they're called, because once you add chlorine to your well water system, it will loosen up some iron, some other deposits inside those pipes. So by removing these, it'll help to allow the little particles to flow out your faucets and into the drain, therefore not plugging up these aeration screens. All right, so it's been a week and a half since I chlorinated the well water. Something that I did in the evenings to help flush the chlorine out of the well water, I attached a garden hose. I put the garden hose away from the lawn because chlorinated water will, in fact, kill the lawn. But I ran the garden hose for about three to four hours each night for about four to five days. And at the conclusion of those four to five days, I started testing the water in the house with chlorine test strips and as of about four or five days ago, there was no chlorine detected in the well water. So now what we need to do is test for this coliform bacteria. Now, I bought this coliform bacteria test kit. It's kind of like a do-it-yourself kit. Uh, I will leave a link for this in the description down below. But the first thing you want to do, you want to wash your hands thoroughly with soap and water. I've done that. Uh, the second thing you want to do is just run your faucet tap for about four to five minutes to ensure that any contaminants in the faucet have flushed out. So at this point, we're ready to fill this bottle with our water. So I'm going to very carefully remove this cap without touching it. There's actually a seal here. Let's carefully remove this seal. I'm going to turn on the water for a second here. And what the instructions state for us to do is fill it up to the shoulder. I would assume that this is the shoulder. I would presume that this is the shoulder. So let's fill up this bottle. All right, that has been filled up to the shoulder of the bottle. I'm gonna go ahead and put this lid on without touching the bottom of it. Put this lid on nice and tight. And now I believe the instructions say shake bottle vigorously for 20 seconds to dissolve the media. So we'll shake this. All right, so it's been 20 seconds. I see no media left on the bottom of the bottle. And now what we need to do, we need to let this sit for 48 hours and the instructions state to leave this bottle in a room with a temperature between 68 degrees to 90 degrees. And of course you don't want this in direct sunlight or anything like that. So set the timer, we'll check back in in 48 hours and we'll see if this bottle stays purple or if it turns yellow. If it stays purple, this indicates no harmful bacteria were detected in the sample. Now if the sample turns yellow, that indicates that it's highly likely that harmful coliform bacteria are present. So let's check back in in 48 hours.